If you're a new starter to Python programming, I highly recommend watching this video to the end. But if you have some experience with Python, make sure to check out the timeline at the bottom of this video and watch as appropriate. So if you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about data types in Python. This is really fundamental to a lot of the things that we do in Python development. You really want to be on top of what kind of data you are dealing with, because if you don't know what type of data is going through the pipelines that you have developed, you might make a lot of mistakes and it will be pretty hard to find if you've got a really long pipeline of operations on your data. So let's do this. Okay, so for today's work, let's go ahead, open a new directory and call it number three data types. And within that directory, make a new Python file. Again, call it three underscore data types, and it will automatically assign data types.py. What I want to really show you is that, let's say I want to run print hello. If I'm running this for the first time, I have to go to run and select the second run in the menu. It will say, what do you want to run? I want to run data types, and it will run it and print hello. But once I run it for one time, I will not have to go to the second run in the menu. I can if you want, but it's easier just to select the top one. So I'm going to delete that because I wasn't going to talk about print hello. I want to talk to you about data types. So what kinds of what kind of different data can we feed into Python? I have talked about one of them extensively in a video which I'm putting the link up the top right, which are strings. They are a huge part of any programming language. If I go ahead and say print hello, it will print hello as I showed you. But I want to understand the type of this data because it's between quotation marks right here. It should print as being a string. Let's look at that. Yes, it's from a class string. So remember this. In Python, anytime you have anything in between double quotation marks or single quotation marks, Python will treat it as a string. Strings are normally human spoken language which contains anything. It can be alphabet, it can be words, sentences, even numbers. But we want Python to understand the difference between we using numbers as just talking about them, or we actually want to say two plus two. Let me not get ahead of myself. I just wanted to show you if I put this number in between quotation marks, Python still thinks that it's a string. Whereas if I put that outside the quotation marks, I'm expecting to see something different. But let's put a comment here and say, first data types that we're talking about are strings. Strings are placed in between quotation marks and they can be anything. So if I can say print type of uh, two birds ate the worm. And if I run this, you will see that the top one was a string, which is 2222. And also this one is a string, which is class string. So pretty easy. But you might remember from my strings video that I can actually add strings together. I can say, I want to say print hi space and world. Not hello world, but hi world. So if I run that, you will see that, yeah, we had a class string. We had a class string, which is these two ones. I was looking at the type, but here I'm just saying printed. I'm not looking at the type. It says, okay, hi world. This is strings. Let's move to number two. Oops, put a comment. Number two, integers. Integers are literally numbers. So if I if I were to say print the type of this number, which is number nine, run it again, you will see that it's a class int. So the top three lines come from these ones, ignore them because they will keep populating. But this one is class integer. So let me just quickly make this and do it 50 times. When I run that, I should get that line that separates the integers from strings. Coming back to this, the number nine, its type is an integer. And that's very important. Or I can say, what is the type of 1000? Again, if I run it, 
I should get a second integer class, which, which is because of the number 1000. But if I had put 1000 in between double quotation marks, I would get string. Look at that. If I put it in between uh, quotation marks, and if I run it, you will see that now it says string. I don't want this to be a string. Go back. Let's print the same number of lines just as a separator. And now let's move to number three, floats. Float, floating point numbers are not full numbers. They're like 1.5, 355.2. So if I look at the print, print the type of 352.4, you will see that I will get float. And that's a class float because it's a floating point number. You might wonder, how about negatives? Doesn't matter, negative or positive or, so if this is negative nine, here I should get class integer again. Let me run that. You will see that negative nine is still an integer and negative 352.4 is still a float because the sign of that value doesn't matter. It's just what kind of a value is that? We're done with strings and numbers. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Let's move on to collections. I will say I am starting to talk about collections. What are collections? Collections are not just one thing because whatever I talked above there, it was just one thing, one sentence, one word, one piece of text, one number, one floating number. But what if I have a series of them all together? The first one is lists. So let's go down and say number four is lists. Let me just print those stars again so that I know. Lists are like this. So because I'm looking at the type, I'm just doing print the type for me. I'm going to say number one, number two, and number three. So I want to understand what is the type of this thing, this collection. Let me run that. I just want to run it. It's a class list. Lists are a fundamental part of Python programming language. And it doesn't mean, it, it, they can include anything. They can have um, a string of number one, a string number two, a string number three, number one itself, number two itself, number three itself, and it doesn't matter. And then you can have another one, which is a cow, if you want to, then you can have 324. It doesn't matter. You can put anything you want inside a list. But to remember, lists are ordered. So the order of elements inside a list are important. So this is position number zero, position number one, position number two, and so forth. So remember, let's say lists are ordered. That is very important. Let's copy my stars here and go ahead with number five, which is dictionaries. Dictionaries are not ordered by default. So Python doesn't understand which came first, which came second. It doesn't understand. It says, look, I've got a collection of stuff and doesn't matter. Dictionaries are an interesting one and they are hugely important. How do they work? Before I go and say print type of this thing, I'll show you what a dictionary looks like. A dictionary opens and closes with a curly bracket. Then you have a key and a value, but you show it with key colon value. So this is one member of a dictionary. The second member is key two mapped to value two. That's the second member. But you can see that now my pie charm hates them, says, what are you doing? What are these? I don't understand what is key, what is value. Sorry, pie charm, you're right. Let's make another new dictionary and say, for example, my name maps to Amir. That's my name, and that's my uh, that's my first name. My last name maps to Charki, okay, and my age maps to twenty three. No, it doesn't. But who knows? The important thing is that you have pairs of values, then a comma, another pair of values, another comma, and then another pair of values. You can have millions. I'm I'm just showing you three here. So this is a dictionary which is like pretty much any language dictionary. For example, you go to an English to English dictionary and it says, what is the meaning of demonstrate? So that's your 
key. And it says, demonstrate means to show, to display, to show whatever. And that's your value for the word demonstrate. Now, if I go ahead and say, print the type of this thing, close them down here and run this thing, you will see that it's a class dict, which means a dictionary. Let's move on to the sixth type. Some people call them tuples, some people call them tuples. I like to call them tuples because it sounds easier for me. But what you want to remember about tuples, the most important thing is that they are immutable. You can't change them. Now you might say, okay, which ones can I change? You can change dictionaries if you want. You can change lists if you want. But with tuples or tuples, they are immutable. Once you set it, you can't change it. How do they work? They work with normal parentheses or brackets. So you can have one, two, three, four as an example. And if I go ahead and say print type of this thing, you will see that it's a tuple. So let me just put my stars in the line before again, run this, I should get a class tuple for this thing. PyCharm says you should put spaces here. You are right. I should put spaces there. After tuples, let's talk about number seven. Let me just copy my stars here, my separator stars. Number seven, we are talking about sets. So sets are unique values. And this is what you need to remember about sets. Inside sets, you can't have a repeated thing. For example, you can't have one, one, two, three, four, five. Mm -mm. Doesn't work with sets. In sets, you can have one instance of everything that you have. So if you have 100 apples and then 300 oranges, it will show you one apple, one orange. If you have apple, 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 then orange, 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 it will show you one apple, one orange. So sets also work with curly brackets, but the difference is they don't have key value pair. They have just like value, whatever the value is. So I can have apple, and I can have one, and I have I can have orange, and I can have 2.5. Now, if I run print the type for me, please, you will see that I should get a set. Fingers crossed. It's a class set. Sets are really useful when you want to find unique values. For example, you have 100,000 clients, and you want to find their unique names. You don't care if there are 5,000 people called Michael. You just want to know if there is a Michael, you check that. And the last thing, which I move out of collections now, let me just copy and paste my stars here and let's call it Booleans. Booleans are for your decision making practices. So it's like, imagine you are, a, you are designing a robot in a factory and you want to say, robot, if you can smell, or you know, the robot has a sensor, if your sensor can smell more than 1% carbon dioxide, start the alarms. So the code will be like carbon dioxide more than 2%, alarms go up. So it's a yes or no, true or false variable. So your booleans are just two, essentially true or false. So if I go ahead and say print the type of this word and run this, you will see that it's a class bool. That same applies to false. If I run that, you will see that it's a class bool. So this was a really quick overview of what uh, variables and data types are in Python. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and give me some comments. I want to understand, am I doing a good job by explaining uh, whatever I'm explaining to you? And I really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel because that helps me grow my audience. Thank you and stay tuned.